<clears throat> thanks very much, Gary. Uh, and thanks very much, uh, Stuart, for uh, allowing this opportunity uh, to present some uh, work that we've been doing. Um, what, what I'm going to talk about uh, is uh, how the pipe and soil properties uh, affect leak noise propagation in plastic pipes. Um, uh, as you'll see, I'm, I'm uh, affiliated with a university, so I'm not a, a leak, uh, a water leak professional, but I have a, had an interest in this topic for quite a few years now. Um, and you'll probably also hear that I'm not uh, Brazilian, I'm actually British. Um, I, I live in Brazil, but um, at the moment uh, I'm speaking from, from the UK. So um, before I start, I, I just thought I'd tell you um, uh, where, uh, where I'm based, because Brazil is such a big country, as, as, you, as you know, and most people are aware of uh, Rio de Janeiro, which you, you see here, and this is the immediate image that comes to mind when people think of Brazil. Um, but, but I actually live in this small city here called Ilha Solteira, and this is the state of São Paulo. And the state of São Paulo holds about a quarter of the population of Brazil. So it's quite condensed uh, down in that region. And uh, when people think of the state of São Paulo, they naturally think of São Paulo City, uh, which is down here, which is a huge metropolis now, around about 20, over 20 million people uh, in the greater metropolitan area. Uh, but the place that I live is, is, is about a 12 hour drive from uh, Sao Paulo. It's a, it's a way out uh, in the interior, but it, um, it doesn't look like the jungle that you might have in your mind when you think about this place. It's got a, a huge river uh, flowing next to it, and it's got a rather large hydroelectric power plant uh, which is currently, currently run by uh, China uh, Three Gorges Company. So um, that's uh, where uh, I live. So let me talk about why I am doing this work, um, which I've been doing for a number of years now. And the primary motivation is to try to improve the performance of leak noise correlators for plastic pipes. And uh, most people are, 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 are aware that plastic pipes uh, uh, are problematic when it comes to leak noise um, detection. And so this is a typical situation that uh, one, one might have, a, a leak uh, buried uh, in, in the pipe, uh, 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 the, the pipe uh, being buried at some depth uh, in the soil and to pinpoint this leak, we place a sensor either side of the leak at some convenient access point, and then use a leak noise correlator. And what this does, in fact, is it measures the difference in the arrival times of the noise at the two sensors, and it will give you this so-called time delay here. And we have to convert that time delay to a distance, so we know where to uh, dig the hole to repair the leak. And, and in order to do that, we need to know um, the uh, wave speed or the speed at which the leak noise propagates. Um, so there's two things that we need to know in order to determine the, this uh, distance here from one of the sensors. Um, one is this time delay, which is given by the leak noise correlator, and the other is this uh, um, uh, estimate of the speed at which the leak noise propagates. And, um, and that is often uh, found in tables or, or it can be measured in situ. Well, the pipe properties uh, affect both of these quantities. Uh, and what I hope to do over the next uh, half an, an hour or so is to um, explain uh, how the uh, pipe properties and the soil properties indeed uh, affect uh, these quantities. So, so these are the basic objectives of, of, of the, the, the work and, and indeed of the talk, uh, and it's to demonstrate how leak noise propagates in, in buried plastic water pipes, um, 
and to have a look at the effects of the pipe and the effects of the soil. So let us um, let us take uh, the first uh, uh, one of these. Let's take the effects of the pipe first of all. So we will remove the soil and just look at the pipe. So here is the um, situation that we uh, uh, started with. And what I want to do now is just remove the instrumentation and then we'll remove the soil. So we're simply left with a, a water pipe. And um, now we just look at a section of the water pipe. And I would like to start off by looking at two extreme cases. Uh, because these will help us to understand uh, uh, what comes next. Um, the first case is where we have an infinitely stiff uh, pipe wall, um, which of course doesn't exist in practice, it's a hypothetical situation. And then the second case is where we have a, an empty pipe, uh, so there's, we empty the water out of the pipe and we look only at the effects of, uh, we only look at the pipe wall and uh, so we'll look at the, this one first where we've got an infinitely stiff pipe wall um, so in this case uh, we've got water inside the pipe of course uh, and we can excite a, a wave in, in, in the pipe uh, in the water in fact and this can be done as in this case with a piston or as in the case in a water pipe with a water leak. So this will generate an acoustic wave uh, within the water uh, and that wave will propagate uh, from left to right. And if the pipe is infinitely stiff, it will propagate at a wave speed of about 1500 meters per second. Uh, it's quite, uh, quite a high wave speed. If we now look at the case where we've got an empty pipe, then, uh, the, you, then you get a wave within the pipe wall. And the wave speed there is dependent upon uh, the material properties of the, of the pipe. And in the uh, case of a steel pipe, you see that the wave speed's very high. It's about 1500 meters per second, uh, uh, sorry, 5,000 meters per second. In the case of a plastic pipe, a softer pipe, it's around about 1500 meters per second, which is similar to the wave speed uh, in water. And this is a particular type of wave. It, it's a, a wave where the wave speed is independent of frequency, which means that it's non-dispersive. Now, what non-dispersive means uh, is that if you've inject a, a, a waveform into the pipe wall, then it will propagate uh, without distortion. And that's why we call it non-dispersive. And uh, it, it's particularly fortunate actually for leak noise uh, propagation and, and using this to detect leaks, that the waves that we're interested in are non-dispersive, that the wave speed is independent of frequency. So we have these two extreme uh, conditions, but in practice, uh, that's uh, not uh, quite the case. So let us now look at, at, at the cross section of the pipe. And this is the way a pipe will vibrate, whether it's got water inside it or, or not. And what I would like to draw your attention to is the fact that this one on the left here is the only one where the area, the cross-sectional area, changes when the pipe vibrates. Okay. In all of the other um, modes of vibration, then the area does not change. And what this means is that if you get a pressure inside the pipe, which you get, an acoustic pressure, which you get when you, when you have a leak, then this will strongly excite this mode of vibration on the left, it will not excite these other types of vibration. And so we are going to concentrate on the type of vibration which is on, on the left. So this vibrates 
uh, radially, as you can see uh, on the left. And that generates a wave which propagates uh, to, to the right. And as it propagates, it moves the pipe in and out in, in, in this kind of way. So you get quite strong radial motion of the pipe as the wave propagates uh, along the pipe. And, and because we've got two medium, we've got the water and we've got the pipe wall, you will still get two waves, but now they are not completely separate. They are coupled together. And this one that I'm showing uh, uh, here is what we call a predominantly fluid borne wave. Uh, most of the energy is in the fluid, but it is really well coupled to the pipe wall. And the other wave that you get is one which is predominantly structure borne. It's where the energy is mainly contained within the pipe uh, wall. But the one that is of particular interest to us uh, for leak detection is the predominantly fluid borne wave. So, um, question is, is how does this couple uh, into, uh, and how, how, well, how is the fluid and the structure coupled together? Well, if you have a stiff pipe, as a metallic pipe, for example, then what you find is the coupling is much less. And what you get is a fairly high wave speed, and you get fairly small radial motion. If you've got a soft pipe, there, then what you get is this condition on the right and the coupling has the effect of slowing the wave down so we get a very low wave speed and we get a very large radial motion. Um, so what do I mean by stiff or soft pipe? Well what's of interest from the pipe point of view is what we call the hoop stiffness. So if we take a pipe and we apply a pressure inside the pipe, then we will get a radial motion, uh, W here. And if we divide the pressure by the radial motion, we get the, the hoop stiffness. And this is a function of uh, two properties here, as you, you can see. It's a function of the material property, but it's also a function of the geometry. So you could have, for example, uh, a very uh, small diameter pipe, which is made of a, quite a soft material, but that can be quite stiff because the uh, radius or, uh, is quite small. Uh, on the other hand, you can have a fairly stiff material, but a fairly large diameter that in fact has a fairly low stiffness um, because again of this term here, uh, uh, H squared. And we have the water stiffness as well. And the water stiffness is given by this expression, which again is a function of uh, material property, in this case, the bulk modulus, and also geometry. Both of them uh, uh, affect, are affected by the geometry. And in order for us to have a stiff pipe, where the coupling between the water and the pipe is not very strong, we require the hoop stiffness to be greater than, much greater than the uh, water stiffness. And if we have a soft pipe, then it's the other way around. The hoop stiffness of the pipe is less than the water stiffness. And it's this second case where we have the soft pipe that is the case uh, in uh, plastic pipes in water distribution systems. So here's an example, and this is the approximate expression to give you the wave speed, which is the speed at which the leak noise propagates. It's 1500, which is the speed of uh, wave speed in water in an infinitely stiff pi, divided by this expression here, where you've got this ratio of the two stiffnesses. And a, a typical example would be, for example, uh, a steel pi, uh, where we've got a, uh, a radius of 80 millimeters and the wall thickness of uh, 10 millimeters, the wave speed is, is not uh, reduced by very much from what it would be, oh, sorry, 
what it what it would be in uh, an infinitely uh, rigid pipe. But if you put it in into a uh, a an MGPE pipe, if you put the water in there, you see that the wave speed reduces dramatically. It comes down to about 383 meters per second. So it's reduced um, by a factor of four, which is quite a lot. Um, so what effect uh, does this have? Well, let, us, let, me, let me now look at what happens when we uh, put some damping into a pipe wall. Let me just show that again. So if we put some damping into the pipe wall, you see that the wave decays away with distance. So far away from the leak, you'll get very little motion. And this decay that you get, let's try it again. This decay that you get is uh, exponential. And it, it, it decays away with an envelope given by uh, this expression here. So it's e to the minus, so uh, frequency, so omega is frequency. Uh, X is the distance between the measurement positions. But now it's a function of two things. It's a function of this thing called the loss factor, eta pi. So this is the amount of damping in the pipe wall. But it's also a function of the wave speed as well. So you can have a, a fairly uh, uh, low damped pipe, but it's plastic, that in which the wave speed decays away very quickly because the wave speed is low because it because it makes it softer so it's the, the rate at which the wave decays away is not just a function of the damping in the pipe wall it's also a function of, of uh, uh, the wave speed as well which is a function of uh, how stiff or how soft the, the pipe is and so we can summarize that the, the wave attenuation uh, increases with frequency, so it's higher with frequency, distance from the leak, which is fairly obvious one, I think. And then this third one is not so obvious. It's the one that I've mentioned, that if you've got a smaller wave speed, your wave attention, uh, attenuation will increase. And then finally, if you've got larger damping in, in the pipe wall, and of course, with a plastic pipe, uh, you have these uh, two uh, properties. You've got uh, the property that it has larger damping than a metallic pipe, but it's also softer, so it has a smaller wave speed. So you have these two factors working against you when it comes to uh, leak detection. So let's now look at the effects of the soil. So in the soil, there are two waves that uh, can propagate. Well, one is a compressional wave, which is the wave that you see here. And the other is a shear wave. And the shear wave, if we look at the expression on the right, we see that the shear wave propagates at a wave speed, which is a function of the shear modulus. Uh, and the density of the soil. Whereas the uh, compressional wave propagates at a much higher speed than the shear wave. And this is a function of the bulk modulus of the soil and the shear modulus of the soil. And what I'd like to show you now is a, a, uh, an animation of uh, a pipe uh, and soil and uh, this is, was done uh, numerically and you can see the pipe here and of course this is the surrounding medium and then what we're doing is we're increasing frequency from 500 to 2500 hertz so let me just start off with it like this this will illustrate the way in which um, sound propagates uh, away from a pipe uh, into the soil. So here we have a, a, a sound source within the pipe and the 
wave of course propagates along the pipe uh, as we've been uh, seeing but what it will also do is it will, it will propagate out at an angle and I'll explain uh, a little bit more about this angle as, as, as the, in, in the next slide. And this is for one wave only. If there are two waves propagating at the same time, a shear wave uh, and a compressional wave, then you will get the superposition of both of these types of waves. So, so as I play this, you'll see as you go higher and higher in frequency, you, you see that the wave uh, decays away uh, much more closely to the leak source. And then you see these other waves, these circular waves appearing. And these are very, very low level waves, but these are waves which are, are not propagating out from the pipe. These are propagating out directly from the leak noise uh, source. So the question is, is when will a wave propagate away from the pipe into the soil because it won't it won't always do this that it requires the condition that the wave speed in the pipe is greater than the wave speed in the soil so if this condition doesn't hold then a wave will not propagate away from the pipe and into the soil now, if you just think about this from the point of view of the pipe for the moment, right? if, the, if, a le if, if a wave propagates away from the pipe into the soil, it's like the pipe is losing uh, energy. And so it's as, though the, um, it's as though the soil is acting like damping on that wave, which propagates in the pipe. And so you will get an additional attenuation. So if two if two waves propagate away, then the, uh, the damping effect will be much greater than if one propagates away or if none propagate away. And so this all depends upon the type of soil that you've got and also the type of pipe. So let's have a look at a, a situation uh, where you've got a, a wave speed which is just marginally above the wave speed. Uh, uh, so the wave speed in the pipe is just marginally above the wave speed in the soil. So you get a wave that propagates in the pipe, and then you get this wave that propagates out into the soil, but it propagates at a very shallow angle. If we now increase the pipe wave speed uh, by a, a 50%, we see that this angle increases and so the uh, energy propagates away at a, a greater angle and if we increase it to about five times the soil wave speed then we see that the wave propagates almost directly out like that. So what you've actually got is a, a, a pipe with a wave propagating in it and then propagating out into the soil, you have a wave which has a conical waveform. And this wave can be a, a shear wave uh, or a compressional wave uh, or, or a combination uh, of, of the two. So if you were to look at the pipe, uh, actually uh, what you'd see is a wave front propagating out into the soil like this, which is a little bit like what you see if you drop a pebble into, a, into, into water. If we uh, look at it now from the top or from the side, uh, what we would see is something like, like this. So what effect does this have on the, uh, on the um, um, propagation of the leak noise within the pipe. Well, we saw earlier that the envelope uh, of a decaying wave uh, in the pipe is governed by the frequency, the loss factor, the distance, and the wave speed. Well, the soil affects both of these things. Okay. If the wave propagates out, energy leaks out into the soil, and that means that 
you end up with a, a larger loss factor. And it will also affect the wave speed. Now it does this in, a, in a, an, an interesting way. It, it turns out that it's the, only the shear stiffness of the soil which is important. If you were refer back to the expression we had before for calculating the wave speed in the soil, it was 1500 divided by one plus K water over K pipe. Well, we simply add another term in here for the shear stiff stiffness of the soil, and that's just two times the shear modulus divided by uh, the pipe uh, radius. So the soil has two effects. So one is it adds to the hoop stiffness, so it will tend to increase the wave speed. And the second is that it will add to the damping effect uh, uh, as waves propagate uh, away from the pipe. So let's have a look at, at uh, 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 the effect uh, that uh, they have uh, on, on uh, wave propagation. And it depends now to some extent on how you measure the uh, leak noise. So if we were to, for example, measure the leak noise um, using uh, hydrophones uh, at two points, uh, we would expect the pipe uh, just to, uh, the, the, or the spectrum between these two, two measurements here, something that we call the cross spectral density. If we measure that spectrum, we find that it is exponential. So the pipe and the soil together effectively act as a low pass filter. They remove all of the high frequencies, but they keep the low frequencies. Now, if you use uh, other transducers, so for example, you could use a geophone or you could use an accelerometer, then these sensors also act as filters as well. So we get the combined effect of the pipe uh, and the sensors. And we have to multiply these two together to give the uh, overall spectrum. And um, you can see that the pipe as a, as a filtering effect, which removes the high frequencies, and you can see that the transducers have the effect of removing low frequencies and amplifying the high frequencies. So you, we have to consider these two uh, together. So the measurement that we make, we measure at two points, and then we calculate and look at the spectrum of the leak noise, we find it is the product of the pipe characteristics and the transducer characteristics. So if we look at pressure, so if we measure with a hydrophone, then we do not get those uh, suppression effects at low frequencies due to the other types of sensors. And this is one of the reasons why hydrophones can be very useful uh, for measuring uh, uh, leak noise propagation in large diameter concrete pipes. Uh, they will capture the low frequencies uh, very well. If we look at a geophone signal, uh, so if we measure velocity, for example, now uh, of, of the pipe wall, we get what effectively looks like a bandpass type behavior the uh, frequencies are cut off at very, very low frequencies because of the dynamics of the geophone and we get suppression at higher frequencies due to the pipe. And if we look at accelerometer signals, we see that we get further suppression at low frequencies and a slightly more amplification at uh, higher frequencies, but you still get this uh, effect occurring uh, here due to the pipe. So it's really important uh, when you look at the, the spectrum of the leak noise that you understand uh, what is causing 
the shape of that spectrum. It's at low frequencies, it's due to the sensor, and at high frequencies, it's due to, to the pipe and the soil. So let's just look at some examples of what the effect of soil would be. So let's take uh, an, an example uh, of uh, where we've got, uh, say, 20 meters between uh, uh, the measurement point. And I'm going to look at a particular size of pipe. And we'll look at three conditions. Uh, water, where the external medium is water. Uh, one where the soil is quite stiff, it's clay soil. And one where the soil is quite soft, it is sandy soil. So uh, these are the uh, parameters of the pipe. They're taken from a, uh, some measurements that uh, we, we made several several years ago and uh, so he, here's the spectrum and the what I would like to draw your attention to is is these two curves here the there's a red one shown and the red one is for an in-air pipe right? so that is where the the pipe is is taken out of any external medium and then you put it into water, so you put water on the outside now, and you see this, that the, the spectrum shifts to, to, to the left here. And uh, if you take a pipe and you, a plastic pipe, and you put it in water, you find that no waves propagate into the surrounding medium. But what does happen is you get greater attenuation because the pipe wave speed is, is reduced. And, and it's this wave speed reduction which causes the shift in the bandwidth from being uh, high to being low. If we now put it into clay soil, there's two competing effects here. One is that the shear wave uh, tries to stiffen the soil, so this moves the, the uh, bandwidth uh, to the right, but, but then you've got a wave propagating out into the soil and this adds damping uh, and so this pushes uh, this to the left and the net effect is that you're left with a much much reduced uh, bandwidth uh, because of the because of the soil. Uh, if you put it into sandy soil now uh, so the difference between the clay soil and the sandy soil is that the clay soil is is quite stiff sandy soil is softer and with sandy soil however two waves propagate out you find that the bulk modulus and the shear modulus are such that two waves will propagate out from this pipe into the sandy soil and this makes the bandwidth uh, over which you measure the leak noise uh, even uh, smaller so in, in summary if we just look at the condition in air, we see that this general shape is given predominantly at high frequencies by the pipe, at low frequencies by the transducer, and then the shift in this from being relatively high to being relatively low, and the narrowing of the bandwidth is due uh, to the surrounding soil. So the combined effects of the soil just to summarize here, it decreases the speed of leak noise propagation, it limits the distance that leak noise can travel and hence the distance over which you can correlate, and it limits the bandwidth over which the leak noise can, can be measured. And um, this combined effect can be estimated if you know what the pipe geometry in the material is, and the distance between the sensors, and if you have an estimate, a crude estimate of the soil type. So let me just show an experimental result, and then I'll finish with just showing you a, a website that we are developing at the moment. So this was an experiment carried out in the UK with South Staffs Water at the Blithfield uh, Reservoir, and we created our leak simply by opening a uh, nozzle on a standpipe. This test site is about 100 meters or so long uh, and it's uh, in a field 
and we um, placed accelerometers. So this was an accelerometer, in fact, this was a geophone, we were doing some other studies at a convenient access points. So um, this here is the uh, comparison between the measurement and the estimate. So the measurement uh, that you can see is uh, the red line and the estimate is the um, blue line. Now, you might say, well, those are not particularly good, but when it comes to estimating the bandwidth over which you will get leak noise, in fact, it's, it's, it's quite good. So what, what, we've, what we've done is we've, oh, sorry, just two other things. Uh, we can measure, measure the wave speed and measure the wave attenuation from, from, those, uh, from those measurements. And the, the wave speed is approximately 380 meters per second or so. It's, it's slightly, I'll just point this fact out, it's not constant with frequency here. It reduces slightly with frequency. And this is mainly due to the inertial effects of the pipe, which, um, which uh, I, I didn't take into account previously in the talk. And this is the wave attenuation and it's given in decibels per meter. So for example, here you can see at the upper end of the frequency range, we would have a loss of about 1.6 decibels in, in, in a meter. So over 50 meters, you would have a 75 decibel loss, which is uh, a, a lot. So what we've done uh, quite recently, in fact, is to develop a, a website, which we hope to make available quite soon. And it's just to allow people to, to get a, a rough estimate of where, over what frequency range they would sense noise in a given measured situation. So um, what you have to do is to fill in these boxes here on the left. So you have to fill in the type of pipe, so it can be PVC, MDPE, or, or whatever. Uh, the sensor type, so accelerometer or, or geophone or hydrophone. The type of soil, so clay or, or, or sandy soil, we put some crude estimates of the uh, type of uh, uh, soil properties that you would get. And then the, some geometry, uh, so the outer diameter of the pipe, pipe wall thickness and the distance between the sensors. And then if you uh, and put this in and then you hit compute, it will produce this graph here. So this would tell you that your peak energy, for example, in this situation, is going to be at about 132 hertz and your bandwidth will be between 45 or 270. Now, this is only approximate, but at least if you do this and you will tell you that, okay, my my frequency uh, uh, range where the noise, leak noise is going to be concentrated is going to be between 50 and 250 hertz rather than say 500 uh, and a kilohertz. So it will steer you in the direction of where you would need to uh, put your uh, 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 filter cutoff if you were doing um, leak noise detection. As I said, this is, this is not available yet, but we hope to make it available quite soon. And when we do, I, I will let uh, people know through the, through the network. So in summary then, what we've done uh, in, in this talk is to talk a little bit about leak noise propagation in buried water pipes. Um, I've tried very much to do it by illustrating the behavior rather than looking at um, the, the mathematics behind it. And we've looked at the effects of pipe properties and we've seen that it's the predominantly fluid borne wave which is important in the propagation of leak noise. And that the pipe does two things, it slows down the wave and it can slow it down very dramatically and it will attenuate uh, the uh, wave propagation. Uh, the soil 
The soil has two effects. It will add stiffness. So this is the shear stiffness of the soil. It will add stiffness, so it will speed up the wave. And it will also add damping, uh, and that is due to wave propagation um, uh, out into the, into the soil. And both of these effects uh, will limit the bandwidth over which leak noise can be sensed. And this in turn will affect um, how accurate your uh, time delay estimate would be, uh, and hence uh, where you will uh, uh, be able to locate uh, the leak. So um, I haven't done this work uh, by myself. I've done it with quite a few other people. And of late, I've done it with my Brazilian colleagues uh, here, uh, in particular, Fabrizio Almeida. And, and then in my previous institution, uh, two colleagues there, Phil Joseph and Jen Muggleton. And, and then there's a, a colleague who was a former PhD student, Gao Yan, who works in the uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. And then we've done uh, the work on the numerical aspects with uh, some colleagues in Australia. And various uh, agencies have, have funded this work. Um, uh, uh, over the years, and it is ongoing uh, with the support of uh, FAPSB and SABSB. Uh, for those of you who are interested in the details behind all of this, there have been quite a few uh, papers written uh, over time, so I will put these up uh, slowly so you can uh, go back and uh, have a look at uh, these uh, for those who are who are more interested. Okay, there's quite a few papers and you can access them uh, from, from journals. Finally, if you've got any questions, then please send me an email and I will happily try to, to, to answer them. Um, but in the meantime, um, I will try to answer some questions now if, if people have any. Okay. Uh, so let me stop sharing my screen uh, right now. And look at the chat box. So there's a, 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 a Question from Stuart Hamilton, can you expand on the maximum distance between fittings you should correlate when using accelerometers on plastic pipes and on how the pressure may affect this distance? Um, well, you, you can actually correlate uh, because you've got two sensors, you can actually correlate using leak noise over a greater distance than you can if you hear it. And, and, and this is because the leak noise signal may be buried in background noise. And um, uh, the correlation allows the uh, signal to be extracted from that noise. And if you're just using your ear, you can't do that. You only hear the, the, the background noise. But as a... a, a uh, um, 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 it, it's, it's hard to give an exact answer using, uh, uh, to, to be able to say exactly how, uh, how far you can uh, correlate using accelerometers. I have some data that was measured in Canada uh, many, many years ago, and the distance between the sensors there was slightly over 100 meters, about 120 meters. And there, there managed to be a, quite a good correlation using accelerometers. My own experience uh, is that uh, it's very difficult to get a decent correlation um, over a distance more than about 50 meters. So I, 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 would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even try it over 50 meters. Um, and then what you'd find if you did it over a very large distance, then your frequency range over which you get leak noise is very, very low because of this 
filtering effect of the time. In, in terms of the pressure, I think that uh, if you double the pressure, then you will double the uh, velocity or the displacement of the of the pipe. Okay, so increasing pressure will help, and I think it will help in a in a proportionate way. So if the pressure is very high, then you'll get a a, a, a much greater uh, amplitude of leak noise at the source. And, and that means that you will be able to hear it further away. Um, so another question, uh, have you investigated the impact of placing one sensor on the distribution pipe and one sensor on a communication pipe? Uh, quite often the pipe materials are different. Uh, yes, uh, in fact, we've, we've done some work on this Quite, quite recently, and it, it all depends upon the uh, it all depends upon the material property of the communication pipe. If that is if that is plastic, say for, for example, uh, then the wave will propagate in that at about fifteen hundred meters per second. Uh, if you are have got a uh, a uh, wave in the pipe, in the plastic pipe, then that wave speed may be at about 400 meters per second. And so the time delays that you get through your communication pipe can be quite small compared to the time delays that you get within the main pipe. And so you can neglect them. And so it does depend upon, as, as was mentioned uh, in the question, uh, are, are on the different material properties of the pipe. So another question uh, uh, here, can you give an example of how soils and leak type on PVC affects area you can hear the leak when ground miking on the, when miking on the ground surface? Uh, leak type. I cannot comment on the leak type because I've not done much work in that area. So I can't comment uh, on that. Uh, PVC, PVC is slightly stiffer than MDPE, so it's with a slightly less coupling. Um, and, and how the soil, right? So this in fact is a current topic of my research. I'm looking now at uh, how I can measure the uh, uh, noise on the surface and then uh, relate that back to the, 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 back to the leak. And, and it's actually a very complicated problem because it depends upon the soil properties and the, the, the the size of the pipe, for example, as to whether you'll get one wave propagating or two, wave propaga two waves propagating. But you will not be able to measure very far using a, um, a, a ground microphone. You are within meters of a leak, not tens of meters from a leak. I think I think that's it. Uh, uh, hi, there was also a, um, a comment from Eric, but I'm not sure if that was a comment or a question, a bit further up before Ian Rogers' uh, comment. Oh, yeah, sorry, I see it. I see it, yeah. Yeah, just got it. When we use hydrophone sensors, they are in contact with water, and we may suppose that the velocity of sound is different than when we use accelerometers. In the first case, we mainly use water as propagation of sound, where in the second case, it's a combination of water and pipe. Well, well actually, that's not, that's not quite the case. If you use an accelerometer or if you use a hydrophone, what they both sense is the predominantly fluid-borne wave. The accelerometer doesn't really measure the wave within the pipe. It, if provided that there's reasonably strong coupling between the pipe wall uh, and, the, and the water, 
both of the sensors will measure exactly the same velocity. It's, it's the velocity of the predominantly fluid borne wave, and it is that wave that propagates a leak noise. So there's, there's no difference, as far as I'm aware. Ah, comment by uh, Stuart. Um, have you found or can comment on how, if at all, the age of a pipe case hardens the pipe wall, so it makes it better for sound attenuation and speed of sound? Well, I think it. Uh, I think it comes back to that very basic uh, uh, um, expression that we we looked at at, at the beginning, where the amount of coupling and the, 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 the effect uh, on the wave speed is basically the, the ratio of the stiffness of the pipe compared to the stiffness of the water. And if you stiffen the pipe because it case hardens or it ages, then there will be less coupling between the fluid and the, the pipe wall. And so the wave speed will go up and the attenuation that you get will go down. So it will be better from the point of view of uh, leak detection uh, if you have a, a, a stiffer pipe. Okay, uh, a, a, a question here from uh, uh, Eric. On one slide you explain wave speed is dependent on frequency and correlation does it mean we have to change velocity depending on which filters you are using um, no if you if you were to, if you were to take a pipe and you would have a very very small distance between your measurements uh, then you could you could then do a correlation over a very very wide frequency range and if you go to very, very high frequencies, you find that the mass effects of the pipe cause some dispersion, so, so cause some velocity change. But in most cases uh, that we've looked at, certainly, is that the bandwidth is fairly low, less than, let's say, 800 hertz or so with plastic pipes. And because of that, the inertial effects are not important. And because of because the inertial effects are not important, then the wave speed tends to be constant with frequency, and so we do not have to worry about um, a changing velocity. Um, on one slide, you explain. Oh no, so I'm just on that slide. So, uh, from uh, Nick Preston, it is unlikely that case hardening of ferrous metals is taking place, age is more likely to impact wall thickness. Okay. Okay. I think, I think Stuart was probably referring more to uh, plastic pipes, I think, rather than metallic pipes. When he was talking about age uh, hardens the pipe wall. Okay, I think I think that's all. Um, I think that's um, some very good questions there and a very good um, presentation, Michael. Um, thank you very much. Um, one one thing I would say is when you do release the website, um, yes. then we would be very interested because we can then release that to everybody using our Friday emailer as well and uh, promote it with all of our on our social media. Uh, platform. So, uh, if you let me know when that's ready, sure, that that would be great, uh, Gareth. Thanks very much indeed. Right. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much, and thanks to everybody for listening in. And um, next week we have our big IWA webinar. So um, that will be on Tuesday, and we've got four different presenters on that one. So that will be quite interesting for everybody as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.